recording. Yeah, I'll give it a sec to say it is. Alright, hello all. Back to... Here we are. Back with, uh... Her facsimile. <laughs> Alright, so far I've got 12% of the game seen. Let's continue, shall we? Recon, shall we? Oh! Interesting. I've taken some time off today so that Trixie can show me the water pool she's been telling me about. I have some sample bottles in my backpack, along with some food and, blanket and a blanket. If it's nice, we can have a picnic lunch here. Uh, there. So, these balls appear to be different colours. They don't appear to be who me. They are! Well, we can't prove that until we've tested them. Reflection, refraction and dispersion can play some fancy tricks on the eye. Poo to your testing. You take all the magic away, science person. It makes your world very dull, I think. Maybe you're right, Trixie. Let's wait and see what wonders you are going to show me, eh? That's right, this way. Well, that just remind me, I've not plugged in my phone. <clears throat> how, how am I gonna respond to people if, uh, well, I don't see them say anything? <laughs> Silly, isn't it? Then again, this is a bit. Uh, rushed because I uh, completely missed track of the time. I was getting too addicted into Warframe. Go around the place <sighs> and trying to get various materials. Yeah, there we go. Manage it from there. Yeah, that's it. That's right, this way. She's disappeared from sight. I run to the cliffside where she was walking and, looking over the edge, I can see that she's jumped to a small rock shelf about four meters down from where I'm stood. Come on, you can do it. Don't be afraid, you can. I'm more concerned about how I will get back up again, actually. There are kind of steps further along, but this way is close to the entrance. Not wanting to appear too much of a killjoy, I clamber over the edge and lower myself down, dropping the last few feet. Impressive! You're getting the feline spring in your step. Um, if you say so. I'm worried I may have twisted my ankle, but I don't want to say anything. Follow me, Spree! She's disappeared again. It's like keeping up with a jackrabbit. Follow my voice! And suddenly, an alarming sound is coming from between two rock faces. It's a high-pitched screeching and very loud. I squeeze through the crevice and am in somewhat... in what looks like a cave without a ceiling. Trix, stop! The sound is so amplified in this enclosure, it has become deafening. Sorry, Humi, but it feels so good! Have a try! What? Yell! Shout! Scream! Sing! At the top of your voice, loud as you can! Oh, um, really? I feel self-conscious, but I am dying to have a go. You only live once, and it's so fabulous! She makes a noise again, and this time I join in. It's fantastic, the acoustics are really something else. It's like an amphitheatre. Eventually, we run out of steam, and I flop to the ground exhausted, but exhilarated too. After we caught a breath, I'm ready to push onwards. We'd better get on if we don't want to be back late. We're here! I'm surprised. I was expecting something more impressive, I suppose. This is the place? 
I look around, the first time I noticed several small pools of water, not much larger than puddles, around the edges of the enclosure. Oh, I see. I bend down the nearest pool and see straight away that it is the deepest red. It looks like blood. Look at mine! Like liquid sky! Across the opposite side, Trix is sitting, and sure enough, the clearest was just blue water. And metal emeralds! And again, I follow her to another pool as green as spring foliage. Then another of deepest purple, one of orange, yellow, pink. Well, it certainly is as amazing as you said, Trix. How strange that they are all so different. What's causing it? It has to be a trick of the light. Put your hand in. Well, I'm not sure that's a good idea. There could be any number of bacteria making this happen. Let's not touch until we're sure it's safe. I've done it not! It's fine! <laughs> I glance over and sure enough, she has her furry little paws in the golden coloured water. What reassured? Somewhat reassured, I scoop us with the blue water and sniff it. It smells wonderful, as though it had been perfumed. What is this smell? It's really familiar. I take out the bottles and begin collecting the waters. My theory about the light is blown when I line up line the little bottles up together and they each retain their original hue. Something is dying this water. I can't wait to get back to the lab and run some tests. We can go back the easy way if you like. Follow me. I head back along the rock shelf and go past the spot we jumped down. No long there is an ascent, just as Trixie said, but I would hardly call it steps. Someone has clearly tried to make a trail here, but it's, but it's all a bit rough and ready. Further along still, I can make out a large empty metal drum. It's rusted, obviously discarded some time ago. I get a closer look and see that there is a tap near the base and the mains of, mains of a label. We could barely have made the words. I take it. I take a picture of it with my catalogue. Uh, catalogue! Uh, anyway, to decipher later. I have been actually talking to quite a few people about the whole catalogue thing, and it's been... <laughs> the amount of cringe I've created just by going, Oh, and it's called a catalogue. Catalogue? I didn't imagine. Uh, um, hmm. <laughs> The perfume I smell in this cave seems to be stronger here. I am very intrigued. Trixie couldn't be less interested in all this. She is happily skipping ahead, looking for a good picnic spot for us. I'll have to be patient with my investigations. Oh, that's interesting. This island just gets stranger and stranger. There are waves crashing. The sound is so loud I can't make myself be heard. But I still scream to the lift raft, life raft that's moving away from the sinking ship. I'm going down with this ship. I'm being thrashed against the sides of the old wooden vessel. This isn't right. The ship looks wrong. The cat's face looms close to mine. Everything is wrong. All of it. Which cat are you? But the words come out of my mouth as mewling and I realise I'm not myself. I'm some kind of beast. Suddenly I'm flying. I'm in the claws of an enormous bird. The beating wings are deafening. I look down and see the ground approaching really fast. You can drop through the break. What's that mean? What break? What break? Breakfast! Rise and shine! That was... That was kind of messed up, wasn't it? Let's draw you some grooming cats, shall we? 
I put my latex gloves and gather my tools. Brush, scissors, swabs, kitty wipes. I can't help but think I've forgotten something. Ah, of course, treats! I leave the tent and head for the lab, stopping to stroke a few of the island's residents on the way. Meow, meow, meow! I call out to the lazing subjects as I enter the lab. Looky, looky, what have I got here? I shake the bag of treats and the small lab erupts into hungry meows. <laughs> it would, it really would. If you want these, you will have to behave, okay? Over the first crate, it's the home of the grouchy Mr. Bumble, and I gently lift him onto the counter to be groomed. Warning, Grumpy, let me check it is. No debris, lovely! I have a feeling you may be discharged in the next day or two. He was born with a mild infection, slight temperature, weepy eyes, but he seems to have recovered remarkably well. In fact, I'm going to recommend to Professor Pauper that we release him by the end of the week. I give Mr. Bumble a cheeky cuddle before I begin to brush his matted fur. Wow, where does it all come from? There's enough fur here to make another cat! Mr. Bumble is beginning to get agitated and lets out a displeased grumble. I know, I know, it's very annoying. Just got to trim you a little bit and then you can go back to sleep. He resignedly lets out, lets me cut some of the fur around his bum and the back of his hind legs. Aren't you a good boy? Here we go, om nom nom. I pour some of the little fish traits into the counter and the ragamuffin <laughs> practically inhales them. Now, let's get you back to our, your cosy crate. I can take your own way and open the next one. Your turn, socks. Just a cut and a colour, yeah? I snort at my own joke and begin brushing the little white cat. He's a lot more lively than old Bumble and keeps trying to bite the brush. Hey, don't make me get the harness, socks. That's no fun for either of us. The cat seems to understand and settles down, only giving the brush an occasional nip when he thinks it, I won't notice. Oh, hello, what's this? I notice a little red patch on his neck, just under his chin. Oh, no, we don't have block flies, do we? Poor Soxy. I take the magnifying glass out of my pocket and examine the inflamed area closer. Ouch. Soxy begins to struggle away from me. He must be in quite a lot of discomfort. It's okay, Sox, I'm just looking. I stood at the cat to try and calm him down. I hate using sedatives and subjects unless absolutely necessary. After a while, I'm able to get a better look at the wound. There doesn't seem to be anything living under there. Under here. I'm relieved I don't have to deal with any blot flies. Blot flies. Hmm, it looks strange. It's like a rash or a sore, but I'm not sure how or where he could have picked it up. I'm worried about how to proceed. Should I clean it with some saline solution and let the air get to it? Or should I put some of Professor's Soothing Cream 116 on it and wrap it in the gauze? Hmm. Oh, it doesn't seem serious, so maybe saline solution. I saw that this should be cleaned with a little saline. No need for anything stronger. I'll reassess the need for the Cream 116 if it hasn't cleared up in the next few days. Puts the sand in the gauze and gently cleans up the He squirms a little. It's not very comfortable for him, but generally he sits pretty well, and it's done in no time. Yes, new unlocks. <laughs> yes, new unlocks. <laughs> Let's go on a date with Trixie, shall we? But Murphy's all happy and glad with the uh, sensor. Yay! Actually, I've not seen uh, Andrew the cat in a while. Nor the previous chap. Come on, Humi! At this rate... <coughs> at this rate, you'll have to go back before we even get there. I'm not built like you, Trix. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> we, you need to cut some slack. These cliffs are hard going. I'm taking an extra long lunch break today to go scavenging with Trixie. Having realised I'm the only member of the family not to be 
represented in rock form, she's become obsessed with finding my crystallized doppelganger. I'm both flattered and unnerved at being a member of a cat family. I try not to overthink it. Can we take five and catch my breath, please? It's okay, we're here! It's just over this edge. Look! <laughs> I catch up with Runes, I instantly see what she's referring to. As soon as my head gets above the cliff we're climbing, I'm going with some kind of rock basin. It's almost volcanic looking, as though something huge once fell here and left an almighty indentation. That's what I was thinking. It looks like the crash of a spaceship or like a giant meteor just went BOOM! Could be wrong. What is this, Trixie? Jump down! It's perfectly safe! The nimble little cat has made it down to the plateau in a couple of swift leaps and is looking up as though encouraging a child into a swimming pool. It's easy! Just spring up and glide down! For you, maybe. I'm a lot less cat than you might think. But as I stumble around, I find it surprisingly easy to find my footing, and my legs feel springier somehow, taking me higher than I expected when I uh, when I jump. The landing feels soft and sure-footed. Maybe all this island exercise is making me fitter. But maybe you're a lot less human than you think. When I've stopped feeling pleased with myself and taken my surroundings, I have to catch my breath. I feel as though I'm standing in a prehistoric time warp. Where are we? What is this? Haha! Yeah. <laughs> Close me if you meet the Luci Lu Lucidite Lucidus get it? The what? Never mind. Just get some of this and ditch dodge the rest of the road. Ha! Ah. So the expressions you use, tricks. You do make me laugh. Were you born on this island? It's calling the rock like it's a scratching post. My parents brought me here in 1967. Really? Wow! Do you remember? No, the last one told me. You mean the person who worked here before me? How did... I'm silenced by her abrupt interruption. Thanks for all the help! I realize I've done nothing and jump up to see what I could do, but Trick seems to have someone... <laughs> seems to have what she came here for. Take this! a shard of black and silver. Hold it to your hand and feel the character. Try to blend with it. I do as I'm told, but the only feeling... the only thing I feel is foolish. I'm not sure, perhaps I'm not very... rock-like? Mineral! Sorry. Okay, leave it. We'll have to try again elsewhere. But to be honest, human, I'm running quite low on ideas for you. I feel guilty that I'm so difficult to place and I wonder if I should try to make it better. Uh, I know I'm not very open to this stuff, but the truth is it makes me feel a bit silly. It's like there's a this game and I'm the only one who doesn't know how to play. It's not a game, Humi, it's really real to me. I see that and I believe that you are being totally general. It's just me, I'm kind of a... I'm some kind of Luddite, I suppose. Trix starts gurgling, a strange little laugh cuts through the tension, and I start laughing too. More from the relief that she's not angry with me than anything. Than anything else. Her good humour picks me up. Look, let me have one last try, will you? Yeah. Be my guest, but I really don't mind calling it a day if you want to go hurt on to Humi. So they, uh, I would love to stop and head back to the camp for a glass of lemonade, oh, cool lemonade, but I feel I owe Trixie more effort than I've been making. No, I'm placing myself in your paws. I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to get me in touch with my higher self. Oh, good use of terminology, Humi. One bunny point already. Okay, so stand up and close your eyes. I do as I told. Now feel the flow of energy come through your crown chakra. White light coursing through your body. Crown chakra? I lost already, but I try to follow what she's suggesting. Wonderful! Now 
slowly raise one leg and extend it behind you. Find your balance. I'm wobbling like a jelly. Good! And extend your arms out in front of you. Stretch right out. Now bring your right hand toward your face with your fingers splayed. What? But I'm managing to keep a straight face. That's something. Now bring your thumb to the tip of your nose. Okay. And wiggle your fingers. There is a stifling gurgling sound. I can't resist. Opening my eye. Opening one eye. Trixie is rolling around, trying not to laugh out loud. I see myself, how ridiculous I look, and I join her in the mirth. That was mean. Oh, Humi, I'm just trying to lighten you up a bit. The best way to enlightenment is through joyful laughter. Well, whatever Christmas cracker you read that in, it wasn't wrong. I've been on the ground for a while, I was soaking in the energy from the rocks, and I can honestly say I felt nothing. Don't worry, newbie. I'll channel for you until your own channels are clear. I have no doubt, I have no idea what she means, but I feel very happy about it. The sun has almost set. A large orange orb so low in the sky, I feel I could reach out and touch it. Maybe this is what Trixie wanted me to see. Her whispered invite from behind the lab door this morning was a brief cave, sundown, dress to de stress, be there or despair. <laughs> okay. As I reach Trixie's cave, my breath is literally taken away. There are clusters of lucidites, tiny illuminated flies that look like strings of fairy lights hung all over the beach. They lead to a formation of rocks close to the water's edge, spot lit by the amber glow of the moon and surrounded by the sparkle and twinkle of the more lucidites. It's magical! I call a Trixie as she emerges from the cave, dragging something in her mouth. I dash over to help her, whatever it is looks too heavy for the delicate Calico cat. What the hell is beeping so much? Oh, thank you! I'm almost done! Could you take it over to the seat? She's indicating the rock formation I was just admiring. And now I see it from this angle, it really does look like a seating area. In fact, the whole area looks like a stage, beautifully lit in the set. When I put the cloth bundle where she wants it and untie it for her, I discover a small collection of objects that Trixie immediately sets about organising. She's so definitely determined, I can't help but see that human in her. In her. Can I do anything? This looks fabulous, Trix. How did you manage to stage the loose lights? She laughs. Easy when you know how. They just love manna. Manna? The manna from the heaven flowers. Look. She takes a flower from a garden she's pulling from the cloth bag and punctures the bulbous centre with her claw. A few drops of clear sticky liquid ooze out. It instantly attracts a tiny swarm of the sparkling flies. What is it? Taste it! Go ahead! It's safe, Yumi! Actually, it's delicious! I gingerly touch a droplet into the top of my pinky and put it on the tip of my tongue. It's sweet and spicy, like cinnamon and honey. She's right, it's delicious. The garland is now around my neck and 
I look like I'm wearing a necklace of dancing lights. Trixie has nudged a much smaller garland onto her head and the effect is stunning. You have a halo! Ah. Trixie giggles. Well, I am an angel after all. <laughs> this stuff is good, would Is there mana in this? I drink a warm, sweet nectar from a shell that Trixie had placed in my hands. Yes, amongst other things. Steady though, McMurphy helped me make it. Oh no. <laughs> if if McMurphy helped her make it, I think we can know know what's in there. Ah, I thought I could take the warmth of this Irish charm. <laughs> Slanty meth. <laughs> As I drain the shell, I feel a bit lightheaded and I sit down on the rock seats. Well, hello chums, I didn't see you there. The whole of Trixie's mineral family are gathered on the other rocks. The gang's all here! This is a lovely treat, Trixie. Thank you! Oh, but the main event is only just beginning! Ahem! I would like to present for your pleasure and delection, delication, Mademoiselle Trixibel! I clap enthusiastic, but I have no idea what's going on. I'm having a ball anyway. And then it begins. Trixie has taken center stage, throws her head to the full moon, and lets out the most almighty sound. It's long, loud, and weird. A strange concoction of meowing, hissing, and purring all together in a cacophony of ear piercing caterwauling. For a moment I'm confused, but it's like another part of me starts to take over, a part of me that understands this awful racket, and my ears rearrange what I'm hearing until it sounds like singing. Beautiful singing. Sad and plaintive. And then rising to hopeful and rousing until I'm compelled to join in. I throw back my head and let out a sound I didn't know I could make. Come on, Humi, come up here. Trix is inviting me to join her on the stage. I'm momentarily brought back to my senses, or whatever who I am, and it jolts me. What the hell am I doing out here on the beach at night with a cloud of yowling cats? Part of me feels like I'm intruding. It's voyeuristic and I feel uncomfortable. Join me! There's another part of me that wants to cut loose and allow myself to experience all of it. Yeah, follow the feline, why not? I leap gracefully on the platform next to Trixie, and here the view is even more astonishing. There are cats swarming in from the rocks and the undergrowth to join us. We are all harmonising as though we are one entity. The tails intertwine and the lights dance around us. Trixie has begun a kind of dance, stretching and twisting her whole body. She looks like elastic! I begin gyrating too. Oh, that's just an awful image. And it feels fantastic. Every muscle and sinew is valuable. I am in total control of my entire anatomy. Before I have time to take in what changed, I am running at full pelt with Trixie following, and behind a whole string of cats, all scampering in some time line with me at their head. I weave around rocks and right up to the water's edge. Then suddenly it all changes again. We are reaching up towards the moon. Cats standing on their hind legs, the front legs outstretched up and swaying, as though being blown in the warm breeze. The moon melting its amber glow over us until suddenly I feel a wave of nausea wash over, wash over me. I break from the other revelers and crawl on my hands and knees a little way up the beach. It feels less potent here, and I lay down for a while and let the sounds of the yowling cats sing me to sleep. Well, that was a weird experience, wasn't it, everyone? You had a lovely nap and wake up feeling revitalized. Your energy has been restored. Magic! <laughs> Trixie, did you take over the game? Oh, wait. 
a minute, was it? Haha, -ha, look, I've unlocked a quarter of it. Not that impressive, this is my third character in this. But maybe, uh, that's a point. I don't have long tricks, it's a busy day in the lab today. Lots of deliveries. Trix is putting the corners of the cloth she lay down on the ground. I know you're a very important and humanly person, but I think you'll be pleased you gave up a bit of your time for this. <laughs> She's produced a small box wrapped in a pretty paper with a ribbon around it. Oh my gosh, where did you get this from? Did you wrap it yourself? There's no need to sound so surprised. I thought you knew by now I'm a very clever cat. Well, open it. Oh, I don't want to spoil it, but... I took off the paper and bows, and as I toss them away, Trixie leaps on them, delightfully playing cat and mouse. Come on, Huey, need help? No, it's mine! <laughs> we toss them the box playfully and eventually I'll retrieve it and take off the lid. Oh, wow, Trix, it's a quick stone! Oh, of course, it's lovely! Trix starts laughing. Oh, Huey, you're so funny! It's not lovely at all, but it is useful! She's right, it's not lovely, it's an ugly looking chunk of stone about the size of a walnut, pinkish grey, but mostly grey. Useful? Does it do something? Pick it up! I take the lump from the box and instantly feel a vibration in my hand. Oh, that's weird. What is it? The feeling is spreading up my arm and through my torso. Can you feel it? It's the quake! It's from the danger zone! What? You went to the danger zone? Well, no, not personally, but I know someone who has. Who? And how? Quakestone! It alters your energy, transforms your frequency. It makes you in tune with the danger zone so you don't get zapped. Wait, are you saying that if I hold this, I can go into Elder Cat territory? That's right, Yumi! That's my gift to you! Prediction! I have a hundred questions competing to be asked, but I know I have to get back to the lab. Yeah. Trixie, you are an angel. Let's meet up another time to discuss where you got this and how to use it. Yeah, Samuel Knox! Try that recon now. It's fascinating to take a closer look at it. Let's have a look at it. The professor is away on an overnight trip to the mainland, so I've got the lab to myself for a while. I've been running tests on the quake stone that Trixie gave me for hours now, and I'm no closer to understanding how it works. It emits a constant pulse, but I can't figure out where the energy needs to generate the vibration it's coming from. Looking at the microscope, the structure seems less like a gem and more organic? It looks like very smooth interlocking scales which move and shift very slowly. It's as if the rock breathes. I sit back and try and clear my head. I wonder. An idea has been half forming at the back of my head mind all day. And now, it's loud and clear, I need to go to the Elder Cat's territory and see if I can't join some of the dots in... Situ. Situ? In Situ. Whatever. I said I'd be full hide ahead of the danger zone alone, so I alert McMurphy to my plan, and he agrees to meet me there. I threw a few things that I think could come in handy into my backpack and set off swinging by Zane briefly to let him know that I'm out of the grounds for a couple of hours. He's on a seat down on the water's edge. Hi Zane! Waiting for the supply boat? He doesn't bother and look up from his paper. No, that's not it. Till that's not till tomorrow. To bring the professor back. Ah, okay. Just catching some rays then? He carries on looking at his paper and doesn't respond. 
Oh, just wanted to let you know I'm going on a field trip today. Now he shows an interest. Aren't you meant to stay in camp when the professor is away? In case something happens to one of the cats? Yes, strictly speaking, but everyone is doing fine and I only tend to be gone for an hour or two. You can cope, can't you? It's not a question of me coping, it's a question of you breaking the rules. My heart sinks. But if it's important, then I expect you to... I expect you have to do what you think is right. I'm taken aback. I get the feeling he's giving me his blessing without saying it. Thanks, eh? Wise words. I turn the head up the jetty path. But it might be a good idea to let me know where you're going, just in case. They're all fine, I promise you. What? They're all fine, I promise you. How does that... Whatever. My concern was for you. Oh, Zane, I'm touched, but I'm... I'll be fine. Thanks for caring. Even so. I feel under pressure to tell him where I'm going, but I'm worried it will stop me. I decide to come clean and hope for the best. Heading up the end of the island. To the danger zone? Elder territory, yes. Be careful, then. I will. And I get away before he can change his mind. I wonder why he's so easygoing about me sneaking off the danger zone. Well, the professor's away. Maybe Zane's not that bad after all. Or maybe he knows something. That's what I'm thinking. It's bloody suspicious if you ask me. I haven't seen any sign of McMurphy. We said... We said we'd meet here on the border of the danger zone. I am squeezing the quickstone in my hand. I can feel the vibration gently pulsing up my arm. Just as I'm about to venture forward alone, I hear a friendly whistle. Murph! Why are you missing me, Kara? I was giving up on you, to be honest. Ah, oh, that's not nice. You should never give up on your buddy. Well, I'm glad you're here. I don't mind admitting I'm a little bit... I'm a bit nervous here. Let me put this around your neck. I've made a collar for him by drilling in... Drilling into a piece of the quake stone and threading some twine through it. I don't want either of us to upset the elders. We need all the protection we can get, although I'm not sure this will even work. It's a big risk. Go on then, stay close to me. And you to me, Carla, and you to me. I can hear the amusement in his voice as he springs ahead of me and crosses the line into the danger zone. For a split second I hesitate, I want to see if anything happens to McMurphy. If something does happen, I want to be able to get help. Not making me cannon fodder, are you, Carla? Just watching your back, Murph. And one large step forward, I'm over the line. I stand still for a moment and feel the difference. And there isn't any. I feel exactly the same. The same pulse coming from the quakestone. Only now it seems to be all around me. It begins to tingle. Can you feel that? I most certainly can, and a beautiful thing it is. Beautiful thing it is. He's right. It feels really relaxing without being drowsy. My mind is super alert and I can feel and I feel much more energized than I did even a few minutes previously. There are some elders over the right. They must be able to see us, but they don't seem to be bothered by us this close. As I take in my surroundings, I notice that there are large rocks that all appear to be made of quickstone. We skirt around the edge area, keeping a <laughs> a low profile as possible. I can't believe you're doing this. Oh, Kara, I wish I could show you your face. Why? Because you're good in ear to ear. You look like the Cheshire cat. Maybe you've gone through the looking glass. <laughs> and I see the huge obelisk type stone which most of the elder cats are sitting around. What do you think, Mac? Quakestone? Has to be. Look at how serene they all are. They are completely calm. Some of them are looking at us, but don't seem in the least bit bothered. There is no aggression in these animals. They are in total harmony with each other and their surroundings. Come on, Mac. Let's leave them in peace. We move back to where we came and gather some lumps of the stone to take back with us. 
I can see why like why they like it here so much. Okay, you. Let's get this off your neck. You'll be turning an elder if you're not ca if I'm not careful. We walk back mostly in silence. It's a nice silence contended. I hope the lonely and unknown spice today. This suits me because I've been itching for the chance of talking to the ferryman and his son. I'm curious to see if they have any useful bits of info that might help me in my quest to find out the real story of this island. The boat only comes once a week and every other week. The weekend deliveries are all the... every other week. Uh, every other weekend. The weekend deliveries are all the good things. Food, mail, treats, etc. And the mood is always light-hearted. These midweek trips, on the other hand, are strictly work-related and tend to be very early morning when we're all a bit grumpy or late at night when we're overtired. Today it's so early that the light has only just broken. Zane and I are waiting down at the jetty. The late. Really? It's only five minutes. Bob's never late. It must be quite a long trip, though, to the mainland. You expect at least five, maybe ten minutes either way. Bob's never late. Wow, you're uh, you're really uh, helpful there, Zane. Um, I'm so glad we have you on the island. We'd never realise this sort of shit otherwise, would we? I know that Zane isn't one for the for chit chat, so I keep quiet and wait. Thankfully, it isn't long. I can hear the sound of the boat's engine before I can see it, since the morning mist hasn't been burnt off by the sun yet. Zane straightens up, and suddenly they're here, emerging from the mist like ghost ship, like a ghost ship. They've been doing this so long that it only takes them minutes to dock and tie off before we're stepping aboard. Right. Right. Another another man a few words. I nod to Bob's sons, Joe, and he nods back. I guess we're the same age, but he's huge. Problems? A few extra crates. Hold us up five minutes. Okay. Me and Bob will do the shifting, you two do the stacking. Until we come back with the outgoing, you stay aboard and sort out the incoming. Got that, Brainy? He's looking at me, Brainy. I'm totally excited that Zane has given me a nickname, but a little crush that the nickname is Brainy. Sure, you bring him, we fling him. I see that I'm the only one green like a fool. Joe knows what to do. You do as you're told. <laughs> Maybe he didn't like the fact that I was saying, you know, you bring him, we fling him. They've gone before I can say anything else. Joe has already started loading up the dolly with incoming crates. He's clearly an old hand, old hand at this. You know, you've been doing this all your life. Family business? Move the crates there. They need to go off next. He's sidestepping my question, but I'm not sure if it's deliberate, so I try a different tact. You don't go to college then, Joe? Nope. I'm not getting anywhere with this, so I change to something less personal. Zane said you're never late, which is pretty impressive considering how far you've come. This is like pulling teeth. How far is it exactly? Quite far. Bloody hell, it is like bloody pulling teeth. Jesus. Jesus, man! Speak! Communicate! You're human, aren't you? Or are they? Or maybe they're aliens? Uh, nothing would go past me so far with what I've seen in this game. Oh, really? And do you stop anywhere else en route? En route? Or are we, are we your only drop-off? 
and suddenly Joe stopped what he's doing and is standing toe to toe with me, locked on my onto my eyes so that I can't look away. You have a lot of questions in you. Uh oh shit, this is when he gets stabs me. You people don't ask questions here. Stab, stab, stab. My suggestion would you keep them where they're on the inside. Don't don't do no good poking your nose into other people's business. I'm shocked by his bluntness. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I was just making small talk. You live with all them cats. Learn from them. My heart beats fast. I think he's going to tell me something. What? All cats know. Curiosity kills them. <laughs> uh, great. Thank you. He starts to laugh out loud. I just stand with my mouth open, not sure how to respond. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? And he laughs even harder. I'm feeling creeped out. And I'm re really relieved to hear the two older men returning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like, it's like he's bottled up all of his humor and then it was just coming out like some sort of alien like um like in the last starfighter there's that character that replaces alex and it was saying like oh laughing hmm ha 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 it's creepy as anything everything all right here they have the crates to be loaded onto the boat What's up with you, Brainy? You look a bit wobbly. Not got your sea legs yet? We were playing cat and mouse, Dad. Bob turns sharply on his son and shuts him up with a look. You don't want to mind him. He doesn't... He doesn't mean no harm. Best take what he says with a pinch of salt. Playing cat and mouse... Or were they cats originally? I, I see a long pass between him and Zane and get the feeling there's a lot more going on than I understand. You need to get back now, Brainy. We can take it from here. I want to ask to stay, be given another chance, but all three men are looking at me and I just turn and slink away. Be more assertive, man! Go on! Go on the offensive! Now let me see. Is that everything I need? I refer to my mum's recipe. That's visual granola, invented by mum. Large rolled oats, four mugs. Pumpkin seeds, half a mug. Sesame seeds, half a mug. Sunflower seeds, half a mug. Jesus Christ. Walnuts, roughly chopped, handful. Flaked almonds, half a mug. Pecans, roughly chopped, handful. Dried apricots, roughly chopped, handful. Dried cherries or cranberries, half a mug. Banana halves, half a mug. Sunflower oil, two teaspoons. Cinnamon, one teaspoon. Salt, one pinch. Honey, four tablespoons. Coconut shavings to garnish. Oh wait, did I forget all of the coconut? I was just a fly box that arrived this morning until my hands find the bag they're searching for. Phew, coconut shavings are a necessity. Wait, even if I had forgotten them, I won't rely on an abundance of fresh coconuts. Still, getting used to the island life. Still getting used to the island life. I set the oven to 150 and leave it to heat up while I measure out the rolled oats. I have quadrupled the quantities so that, hopefully, it will last the whole summer. It seems vast compared to how much I make at home, but I would be, but it would be disastrous if I ran out. Homemade granola is an absolute essential. Yeah, no, thank you. I mix dry ingredients, oats, nuts, seeds, and spices together in a large bowl, and then I add the wet honey and sunflower oil to form a golden, moist consistency. It's, I've actually added a splash more oil than suggested, 
the mixture was feeling a bit drier than usual. Next, I spread it evenly on the baking tray lined with, par tray lined with parchment, partially to save the washing up, and whack it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. Checking often, because the seeds tend to burn quicker than I expected. The smell always drives me crazy. Toasty, warm, homey. I miss my mum. When it's done, I add the fruit as it dries and cools, and put it into several large glass storage jars, being sure to stuff fistfuls in my mouth into my mouth as I do. No, oh, maybe maybe part of that granola is the antidote. I <laughs> know, oh, that he's stupid. I've been following a familiar sound along the shoreline. I can't see Trixie yet, but I'd know that plaintive song anywhere. It leads me to a cave. Trixie, can I come in? Wait a minute. I can hear a flurry of activity, shuffling and liquid being poured. Trixie, are you nearly ready? It's freezing out here. As soon as the sun goes down, the sign becomes ridiculously cool. Come in. Her voice is slow and sing-song. The cave is warm and welcoming. There are flower petals scattered on the floor, round little jars of lucites in every corner. Trixie is stretched out on the rock as though she hasn't moved. Hello, you. Long time no see. Hello, Humi. I wondered when you'd show up. Um, as soon as you invited me, actually. <laughs> She ignores me and indicates a jar of amber liquid. Help yourself. She's in one of those moods, so I take a sip of the mana juice and make note to go easy on it this time, remembering how potent it is. So, how's Trix? Great! You've not been around for a few days. She doesn't respond. I thought you would avoid me. I forced a laugh, but now I'm beginning to think I was right. Have I upset you, Trixie? Well, in a way, I suppose you have. Oh, I was kidding, but tell me, what did I... She cuts across me. I don't mean to be rude, but would you mind just shutting up and letting me talk for a while? Oh, uh, um, of course. I'm a little nervous about what's coming, but I do as I'm told and sit in silence. Life. She pauses and smiles. I'm not sure if I should respond, so I just smile back. Life is great and all, but sometimes it's not quite as great as you try to pretend it is. You get so used to making the best of it that you stop being aware that it's only silver or sometimes even bronze. I mean, nothing to complain about, but... But then something happens that is so golden, so platinum plated, rose gold, that the fabulousity of it catches you up like a twister and turns everything upside down and inside out so that you're flying and dancing against your will. You're powerless and powerful and silver will never be good enough again. Do you know what I mean? I open my mouth, but she plows on without waiting for an answer. I feel it now. The fizzing in my tummy, the fluttering of my heart. I am champagne, popping and sparkling, lighted and silly. Am I silly? I feel very certain and not silly at all. But I can't. Truly happy! Not before happy, which wasn't really like being happy at all. But 24 carat happy, and nothing else will do. There's a long pause, I look down to see that my glass is empty and I suddenly feel a bit woozy. Okay, that's it. That's all I have to say. Your turn. Twitch disconnecting me, for God's sake. <laughs> I 
these days. Power zoom straight to the moon. Anyway. Oh, um, I'm not very good at speech, so I don't think I can match yours. I some plans for you. Soulmates don't come every long every day. Hear me? We have a chance here to take a leap and see where the adventure takes us, or forever wonder what we missed. Yeah, I think it's always best to take the leap. <laughs> to be honest, I um could sound like an old man now, but I've uh, had many moments that I probably could have been happy with someone. And I probably could have had a better life if I took the leap and took the advantage and said, Yes, I'll go out, or yes, I'll do these things and hang out, hang around with you and that. But instead, I just... You know, the anxiety got to me, so it was basically... You know, you just don't want to go out, and then... People just kind of drift away from you. <sighs> oh, video. Um, sorry about that. I didn't mean to completely down everyone. Uh, but yes, tickly. Of course, I'm in together forever. Let the adventures begin. And Trixie and I begin to laugh and laugh until we're roaring around on the ground, so that anyone who saw us would think we were a couple of crazy, intoxicated cats. <laughs> Relationship goes, Trixie! <laughs> uh, I don't think you can... Yeah, you can't do any more once you've done the maximum. So, right, 31.9%. Which means we're going to have to go to another character now after this research. Yes, I'm ready. I can't do anything else. the cats or some of the serious testing the labs I'm trying to see what kind of work the professor has up his sleeve yeah let's try that one my stomach is queasy I really don't want to do this it's strange I'm used to treating subjects with medication injections but something about this doesn't feel right hello you I smile at the gentle cat on the table in front of me, I look at the syringe in my hand. I turn to the professor. What are we testing for with these myths again? He looks up from his desk. Is there a problem, Will? I've already told you, it's supposed to stimulate hair growth. Why do we need to stimulate hair growth? Why indeed? However, ours is not the question why, Will likes of you and I perform the tasks set out by the people who pay our wages. Such is life, eh? Professor returns to his work and I understand the conversation is over. I look back at the little cat. His name is Smokey. He's a loikoi cat with very short, fine hair. A real sweetie. I suppose the professor is right. This is my job and although I feel terrible, I find a way to ignore the pangs of guilt and inject Smokey with medication. He screws birds over quickly and he can return to his cage. How long does this usually take? Mr. looks up again, slightly irritated. I don't know, Will, but if you're being paid to find that out, aren't you... You're, uh, but you're being paid to find out, aren't you, my dear? Ah, uh, yes, of course. I make a note of the time and observe the cat. After five minutes, there's no noticeable change. Ten minutes, still don't change. After half an hour, I notice his hair looks a little different, but I expect my eyes are playing tricks on me. One hour in, and all of a sudden, I can see the hair is visibly longer and seems to be continuing to grow. I must say, I'm very impressed and a little confused. I'm a little concerned, personally. I decided to take a tea break. Smokey seems content to nap for a while. Can I get you a cup of tea, Professor? Oh no, I don't know how you can tolerate the foul stuff they brew up in that mess tent. I have my thermos of coffee here. Thank you. Fair enough. I'll be back in a bit. I've only been gone for ten minutes at most, but as I enter with my 
spoke for the tea, I instantly noticed the drama taking place in Smokey's cage. I find it hard to stifle a laugh. Oh my goodness! Professor, have you seen this? Professor looks up, exasperated by another interruption, but then he notices the cage. Oh dear! <laughs> Poor cat! Well, don't just stand there, Will! Get him out! I open the front of the cage and put the large hairball that Smokey has turned into. His fur tumbles all over my arm as I cradle the bewildered cat. Well, I never! Interesting, isn't it, Will? Oh, I think it's still growing, Professor. I do believe you're right. Perhaps we should consider clippers. Professor hands me a small set of silver electric clippers and I immediately begin using them on the ever-expanding Smokey. I can only change for the next 15 minutes until he finally seems to run out of fur. My, that's a lot of hair! We both stand staring at the pile of fur at our feet. Just keep a small amount for testing and put the rest of it out the back. More can dispose of later. What? Miss Marigold. Excellent work today, Will. Most interesting findings. Uh, thank you, sir. Although the results had nothing to do with me, I'm left feeling a tad guilty about Smokey's ordeal. <laughs> As I place him back in the cage, I check for any signs of trauma, and when satisfying is okay, I awkwardly take my leave. Poor thing, he went from, uh, he went from a short hair to the full-blown long hair. And worse, he's turning into the cousin it of cats. I've come into the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning, I noticed another change in my appearance. I've turned out it needs to cover my transition. Blah blah blah. blah. Despite the fact that my pupils are now vertical slits. I'm exhausted. Can we stop for a second and catch our breath? <laughs> I like Will Cat there, with an awesome, like, uh, hairstyle. <laughs> You're an old, old cat! We've only been dancing for an hour! An hour? You dance, I'll watch. And she giggles and dances while I recline against her and watch the evening sun. Cooler, but still deliciously warm. How did I get to be so lucky? I look back to when I thought about having the vibe. Having the virus is the worst thing imaginable, and it makes me smile. The day I decided to throw in the towel and allow myself to become a cat was the first day of a life beyond my wildest dreams. Why would anyone want an antidote? Being a cat is amazing! Being with Trixie is even better. I lazily stretch and slowly fall into a nap. Trixie settles beside me, the two of us curl up. Our bliss is only briefly disturbed by a familiar sound of the ferry arriving at the pier. It seems my placement has already arrived. They'll never look here, though. We know exactly where to stay safe. I wonder if they'll be as fortunate as me. Chances are, yes. <laughs> Chapter 3! Ooh, all three hearts for Trixie. Hmm. 21% of the total game seen. 3 out of 18 endings seen. Ending achieved. Written the stars. Dates complete. Recon complete. Research complete. Adio. Cats Romance. 2 out of 6. <laughs> Antidote is 33.3% complete. Hmm. Journey. I've only been out of the open waters and it's really smooth sailing. I'm gonna skip the water jet and greet my bow man in his security jacket. ID! Yeah, we've seen this all before. Eleanor! Meow! What do you do? <laughs> Didn't know someone named Eleanor, I'm sure she'd uh, find this hilarious. What's in here? A 
but the coffee would be welcome. I would offer you Irish, but we're out of whiskey. Unless the gin? Just plain is great for me. The rest of the day is taken up with procedural stuff. Professor Paul Paul showing me. Blah blah blah. Yeah, he's certainly eccentric and he gives it and he gives me the catalogue. Ah, the catalogue. On my bed, an invitation to read it, as far as I'm concerned. The first draft. I think it may be the first draft of a novel, and it's not bad either. They certainly have a vivid imagination. There are bizarre stories about talking cats and other island anomalies. They were obviously very inspired by their surroundings. I must say, it's a great read. Imagine if it were true. I laugh at my little fantasy as I snuggle down and first sleep on Cat Island. These cats have to have an intervention at one point, just like sort of all meet up with the person and say, Look, no more stealing shit. And look, you, listen to us. <laughs> Who's there? Yep, notebook's being taken. Nausea, blah blah blah. <laughs> Trixie! I thought Will would probably try and string you out, but honestly. Yeah, caught us a live one! Move back, child. Yes, let him breathe. Well, they won't be alive much longer. My brain begins to defuzz. I realise <laughs> that this is what I was reading about in the novel. Only it wasn't a novel at all. My stomach tightened, so not. It was a journal. I focus my eyes and pick out the big marmalade cat. Have I been bitten? Well, of course you've been bitten. How else will you be able to hear us? This one's an idiot. Don't be rude. The Cleco turn the cat turns to me. You know about being bitten? You read the journal? Most of it. Enough to understand what's happening here, Kara. Enough to know that you have a choice to make. Not to know there is no choice, we have to help each other. Bravo, Kara! So, let's cut to the chase. We've already done the chase bit. Hush now! What do you need to know, human? I'm still a bit daisy and in shock. Oh, uh, everything, really. At that moment, my catalogue starts beeping and sending me a few minutes to get back to camp and start my first day at work. I have to go! Let me get myself together and we can catch up later. I have a feeling you're going to do very well, Kara. The best one yet! Not only thanks to the groundwork of everyone else. Damn lazy cats. <laughs> I don't love it. What? In the calm of. What? I don't even. No, I've <laughs> just about enough mysteries a person can handle for the one day. If you want to be anonymous, I should take it you also don't mind being ignored. <laughs> Already working when I'm. Right, what new mysteries shall we try and discover? I feel it's probably at 33%. Hmm. Give a little snooty booty! Floofy boot! Maybe I should get a cat and call him Fluffy Boot. Floofy Boot. Time to put my battery training to test. Oh, those chairs are that comfortable, my ass. Oh, anyway, 
I'm worried about Socks. None of the treatments so far seem to have been clearing up his wound. Cleaning the area with saline solution seems seemed to do the trick at first, but after a few days the site got too sore to touch even with a soft cotton pad. Not seeing any positive results, I decided to swallow my doubts and use Cream 116. I'm worried that I should have stuck my stuck with my gut feeling and not use the cream because now it's even worse and I've exhausted my options. How best to proceed? I decide to ask the first for his advice. So it's a reserve, I need your advice on socks. Send pick please. Set up a picture of my catalogue and send it to the picture. To the person. Yes, that does look nasty. Have you tried cream 116? Stage 1 protocol was used first, cleaning it with saline solution, etc. But I've tried the cream since, so inflamed. Persevere with cream takes a while, but it will pay off. I feel doubtful, but resign myself to the professor's seniority. If unsatisfied, try a steroid formula in the fridge, red bag. I'm going to the fridge until I find a red bag behind a box of vitamin supplements. Got it. Thank you for your help, sir. I bought the milk in a small board and I'm believed to believe that Sock seems to like it. I sit with him as he laps up and keep and keep an eye on him for a while. After about an hour, I'm satisfied that he's sleeping happily and all his vital stats are normal. Hmm. Let's do a bit of recon, shall we? Self-analysis. I've got to focus on finding an antidote. It's time to run some tests on myself and get things moving faster. I'm running out of time! I'm mean, devoting all the time I can spare to work on the antidote for the catification process. Although it's not an entire failure, progress is slow and I'm concerned that I may be running out of time. I need some more tests on myself to record how the virus is progressing in me and what effects it's having on my body that should give me some idea of how much time I have left before it becomes too difficult to hide the problem from other people. I'm sneaking around in the middle of the night because I can't risk getting found out by Professor Pawpaw or the Mirigolds. The only person likely to check up on what I'm doing at this hour is Zane, the security guard. I'm confident he won't have a clue what any of this stuff means. I start by taking my own blood. Never an easy thing, but trying to find a vein when you're also trying not to look is uh, trying not to look is very tricky indeed. It takes several missed stabs before I get it right, and I take as much as I dare without making myself feel woozy. Uh, I, I have a similar problem. Fine veins in my arms. I've got like chicken wing arms. I take saliva swabs from the inside of my mouth, inside my nostrils, in my ears, and finally from my groin area. <laughs> oh. I see where you swam in a tube and label them 007. Corny, I know, but it makes me smile. I'm also pretty certain no one will pay much attention to the numbers. Everything is numbered around here. So you tend to go blind to any number that isn't the particular one you're looking for. Next, I tweeze out individual hairs from my head. Eyebrows, for up, eyebrows, arms, legs and groin. Each hair is, pre is prepared and placed in the microscope slide. Finally, I take clippings from my fingernails and toenails. Some I prepare onto slides, some I put into test tubes for testing reactivity various agents. <coughs> I'm quite sleepy by the time I've prepared all my specimens and I'm starting to think maybe I should freeze this lot and call it a night. Then I hear something moving around outside. I go and poke my head out, but it's too dark to see anything. Hello? Nothing. Is someone there? Do you want something? This place can be very creepy sometimes. A little diversion has made me feel much more alert and with my second wind I decide to press on with my testing. I work steadily for the next hour and a half before I can draw any conclusions. The short term test results indicate that not much has changed from the last time I did this. 
clearly I am not progressing very fast, which is a big relief. However, I can see some marked changes from before. Mostly these are based on the rate of cell growth and movement within the nail clippings and the hair samples. Everything is growing more quickly. I'm a little disappointed not to have seen anything more inf informative, but I remind myself to be careful what I wish for. I'll place the long-term tests at the back of the specimen fridge and we'll check, um, uh, check up on them in 24 hours. There's not much I can do right now. There away all the equipment I have used and leave the place in exactly the condition I found it. Even Miss Marigold, Mrs. Marigold wouldn't suspect I'd been here. So I don't know, I hear a noise coming from behind me, from inside the lab. I walk back and call outside. Who's in there? Silence. I uh, have security with me. I hear how I hear how ridiculous this sounds. I curse myself for being idiotic. I walk into the lab, put the main light on, and suddenly see the tests I put in the fridge are out on the table. I have no idea what to do, so I just put them back in the fridge. But this time, I use the padlock on the fridge door. Nobody ever bothers with it. I've often wondered why it's even there. I don't want someone getting at my blood samples. I'm too freaked out to think straight now. I need to get back to bed. I turn towards my tent, and there is a huge dark outline of a man in my path. Insane. Evening. Evening. Working? Yep. Doing security? Yup. Good night then. Good night. And as he turns to walk away, I catch him say, almost, in a whisper. There's the monthly stock take at the fridge tomorrow morning. I turn to ask what he means, but he's already gone. I realise I haven't been given a helping hand, so I go back to the fridge and get my samples. I'll take them to my tent and see if I can grab some ice from the mess kitchen on the way. Yes! You looks! I think I'll leave it at that today. Only 36.1%? Oh, never mind. Uh, as always, that was a lot of fun. Anyway, you all have a good night, and have a good day. Bye. Uh, have a good time. Bye.